Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you today. Out of all that we've been through this week and our ups and downs and our difficulties, our trials and tribulations, you've been good to us. You brought us to this place limping and crying and weeping and joyous and celebrating, but we come here for one reason, to magnify your holy name. Real worship is going to take place when we set aside everything else and elevate your holy name. That what you want done will become an integral part of our lives. That what we think, say, and do will show the world that God exists in each of us. So help us in our broken state. Help us, as the Father said on last week, I have faith, but help me with my doubts and fears. Help me to be a better person. We're calling on you today, and we thank you for what you've done for us. We don't know the untold stories of pain and suffering and the things that people have went through or how they're sick, how God is healing them, how they've gone through issues on their jobs or in their marriage or in their relationships or with the city, with the policies that are being made, the laws that seem to persecute people. We just don't know. But we do know one thing. We serve a sovereign God. And our faith has not withered, wavered, nor has it given up on you. But the challenges have taught us to trust you. Even though it doesn't seem as clearly as we would like to, even though we don't have all the answers, you're asking us to step out with you. So today, garrison our hearts and minds that as we go through the rest of worship, we will magnify you. So therefore, we lay before you our sick, our troubled, our people that are going through it, and ask that you meet their needs. We ask for you to meet the needs of this congregation, each collectively and individually. Touch us, God, where we are, and move us to where we ought to be, and unlock your truth in such a way that the world will say, surely there is a God. Surely Christ lives. Surely the Spirit can make a difference in people's lives. Because when we live for you, we are a living testament of your power, your goodness, and your grace. We seek forgiveness for all our transgressions. Every word wasn't perfect. Every thought wasn't thought out well. And our behavior didn't display itself like it ought to have been. We ought to live like you've called us to live, holy and righteously. But every now and then, God, we think you move a little too slow. And we try to take matters into our own hands and make a mess of everything. But thank you for being sovereign and good that can come and clean up the mess and transform our lives and put us back on the right course. That's why we're coming here today, even though we're praising you, we're petitioning you at the same time. That when we leave this place, we don't leave like we came. We leave on fire for God. So bless us and keep us and make us one in accordance with what your son would require of each of us. It is in Christ's magnanimous name we pray and give thanks. And all of God's children said, amen. As we get ready to bring our offering down, we ask that uh, you stand and all things come of thee. You don't mind standing? All things come of thee, God. things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own, as we give of thee. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, some notes before Deacon Coley comes to read the word this morning. You may be seated. We are uh, asking that uh, as we prepare to depart today that you wait for the ushers to tell, to select your road to go so we can keep social distancing and that as you take your communion cups and bring them, they will have something for you to throw your communion cups away as you exit the facility under their directions. Amen.
Yes, sir, you can just drop your offerings. If you didn't get to put it in there, there's an offering plate right there on your way out. You can put your offerings in. Amen? We ask that you continue to pray for those who are going through it. And uh, the Delta variant is here in Goldsboro in the state, and people are getting it. Uh, it is uh, the newest and the worst variant of them all. So we ask that you please be careful and and do all the things you're supposed to do. Wash your hands, keep your distancing, and wear a mask whenever possible. Uh, yeah, we would like people to take your shots. We can't force you to take shots. That's not my job. Mine is to inform you that of protection for yourself. It is. Yes, and I understand it. I appreciate you telling me why you're not going to take the shots. They gave us Johnson & Johnson. Now you need a booster for that. And not develop blood clots in some. Pfizer and Moderna have seemed to have effects on the heart now. We don't know, but what we do know is that the shots protect you better than if you didn't have them. Because the Delta variant is, would do more harm to you. It's you that don't have the shots that will get it worse than we got it that do have those vaccinations. So I'm praying for you that you do what you need. That is your choice. And we respect you for that, but we ask you to if you can do that. If not, work with us as we attempt to try to make sure we try to stay safe. In the event that someone does get COVID and attends worship, please let us know immediately so that we can let our people know and uh, so that they can get tested and make sure that they don't have any issues, uh, that, they can, that they don't have the virus, too. Amen? Amen? So, Deacon Coley, would you come give us a word from the Lord? Our scripture this morning will be coming from Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, mm -hmm. before the evil days come nigh, and God shall say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened in the sun, in the sunset, in the days in which the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow, when the grain is up to see, because they are few. Thank you. Dr. Johnson, would you give us an appropriate song? I'd like you to think of people who have gone through some issues as we prepare for altar call and uh, you stay at your seats. As we elevate them to God, you know some people are going through it. Brother Bell is uh, still in the hospital. He's going through some things. He's going to have a long recovery for himself, but he's thankful. 
His family is thankful for your prayers. People are grieving in our community over death and suffering. But only God can bring comfort and peace. We can do our best to provide for them, but they don't always, we don't always meet what they need or say the right things. But your presence says it all sometimes. Your card, your texts, your tweets, your TikToks, your Twitters, they all mean a lot to people because they read it in the time that they need to. So God, we come to you. We're toe up from the flow up. We've got our public faces on but we have our own personal and private pains. We come knowing that you can cleanse us. We come knowing that you can restore us. We come knowing that you can take our broken pieces and make them whole. So we look to you now, God. We made a mess of things at times, but you promised us that you could fix it. It takes us to get the right attitude to repentance and for reconciliation and for your cleansing. You do all those things so well because you know us. You knew us before we were knitted in our mother's wombs. And you designed a purpose for each of us. Sometimes we get off track of that purpose because we think the grass is greener on the other side. But you make a way out of nowhere. Help us in our hurt and pain that's been inflicted on us as a people. When people think it's open seasoning on you because of the hue of your skin, or they want to make laws so you can't vote because you stepped out and done great things and made a difference in the world. We are people of yours, God, and it's not color with you, it's context and character. What motivates us? And you have to be the center of our being, so help us right now, God. Help us in our failures. Help us in our difficulties. Help us in these moments where we don't know what to do, but help us to be still and know that thou art God. So therefore, God, we look to you now and ask for discerning abilities and power and a fresh wind and a renewing, and we ask for your blessed spirit to touch us, to touch us where we hurt and heal it, to touch us where we're broken and mended, to touch us where we've been a long way and shine a light to give us directions on the way home, to show us how we can become the best that we can be and reach our maximum potentiality with God and through you. We thank you for these. And I don't know what they're going through, God, but I know they know you. I know they have their own experiences. And those experiences teach us that can't nobody do us like you. You brought us through a lot of things. And you can continue to bring us through things until the day we die. So prepare our hearts. Put the armor on us so that we can go out and fight in your name with love and peace and joy and harmony and long-suffering and all the things that are required for them with the helmet of salvation and the sword of faith, the shield of faith and your holy word. Touch us now, God. Heal our brokenness that has kept us apart and bring us one. Help us to understand what the pandemic has done and that you never left us nor forsook us. But you taught us to say that wherever you are, I'm in the midst of you also. Thank you for that right now. So we just praise you now, God. We're taught in your word that when praises go up, blessings come down. So God, we're going to pause for a moment and just praise you in our own way. Some may clap, some may say hallelujah, some may praise the Lord, but we're going to take that moment to thank you right now, God. So if the church would, in your own way, just thank God. You know what he done for you. You know where he brought you from. And Lord, we just magnify you and say hallelujah and thank you, God. In Christ's name, amen. Dr. Johnson will give us a sermonic selection. We shall soon be giving you the God's word.
if you will pray with me. Eternal God, we come now thanking you. We've heard the music. We've sung with our hearts. We've read your word and we prayed. Meditated on you since we've been here, but now comes the preaching moment. Hide this lump of clay in the shadow of Calvary that I be not seen, that I may convey your message of hope, truth, and salvation, that it will convince and convict and convert people to come to know you in a better relationship, that it will bring others who've been away to a place where they can be a part of you and where new people can find a place where they can become disciplined believers. So, Lord, now use me. Let something be said this week that people will meditate until the next time we come together as we give you praise, honor, and glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. How hard is it for you to forgive somebody? Is it easy for you to forgive? Do you forgive and forget? Do you let it go? Or do you harbor that resentment and those grudges in your hearts? Because when people hurt us, it ain't like it's like we're going to let that go. But some is saying that I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm going to get you. I don't care if we get old and our teeth fall out. I'm waiting for the day that I can take my hit back on you. Why? Because sin hurts. Forgiveness does something to us. But the odd thing is, it's a requirement with the relationship with God. God said, I don't want your offerings. I don't want your stuff if you're not doing what I want you to do and what I require of you. Because you're trying to do something on your own agenda. You're trying to make this thing up as you go. It don't work like that with me. There's only one ruler of the house here. And if you can't obey my word, then you don't have no part of me. God says that. And I must admit, I find that I found it difficult in my life from time to time to forgive sins. When I read history and saw what they did to bring our people from Africa, and then for the writer to say, amazing grace, after he raped our women and when they wouldn't have sex with them, him and his drunken, stupid friends threw our women overboard, and the men were in the hull of the ship committing suicide, and God touched his life, and he transformed it, and he said, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, huh, blind, but now I see. I'm looking at what? And I'm looking at David, who had the audacity to say, in the 51st chapter of uh, the psalm, the 51st psalms, Lord, I've sinned against thee and thee alone. What about the woman you raped? What about the man that you gave his own death sentence to and had him carry it back? You just didn't sin against God. You sinned against the people.